Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to 10 Forward Weekly. I um, hope you're all having a great day. I'm uh, just switching up this thing because Jet is apparently running a little late. Uh, so here, now it's just me. Uh, welcome to Vulcan. Um, I wanted to start today uh, by meeting up here and paying tribute to Leonard Nimoy because today is the fourth year anniversary of his passing. Um, uh, and I, I've loved how all day I've seen a ton of you guys being gathered here at... Uh, tons of different instances uh paying tribute i'm not the best at saying um eulogies and things like that uh but i do want to say uh spock and leonard were a huge important part of my life um a huge important part of uh, all of our lives i think and star trek wouldn't be what it was what it is without him and we wouldn't be what we are without him. Uh, and so uh, uh, thank you, Leonard. I'm going to hang out here for a bit um, and chat with you guys in chat, but I, I just wanted to say that first. Uh, and it's, I know it wasn't great, but it was what I had. <clears throat> uh, people are saying, uh, asking me if I'm feeling okay. I just, just wasn't projecting because I was trying to be solemn. Ah. <laughs> uh. This is really cool, though. It's really cool to see this every year. I uh, don't run into people. It ruins their emote. Um, I'm glad we added the torches this year. It adds um, a, a whole other level to this sort of thing. It's really cool. <laughs> uh, Casper House says he's trying to join, but he has a year's worth of patches to install. That's why you play the game more often, bruh. So you don't miss out on stuff. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, I am going to jump to some other uh, instances if I can and take a look at some of the tributes going on there, too. I know somebody in Facebook mentioned number four, uh, but it's full. Wow. That's amazing. There are a ton of full instances on Vulcan right now. That's amazing. This uh, um, speaks to what effect uh, Letter Nimoy had on all of us. It's pretty cool. Uh, there are six Why No Torches on console because they aren't there yet. Uh, sure, I'll invite Chris to join Christopher's team. That'll let me jump instances, probably. Yep. All right, to Vulcan number three. Thank you. Thank you, Locutus. I appreciate it. If people have um, messages about Leonard Nimoy uh, or Spock that they want me to read on the air, I will be happy to do so. Uh, uh, Shannon Sargent says uh, that she's watching the feeds and she can't join in. Uh, she loves Spock. She has ever since she was a little girl. That's really cool to see coming up. I'm just going to go around the fountain so you guys can see all the tributors. We posted a bunch of pictures to Facebook this morning, but people have been here all day, uh, which is really cool. Um, I know some people uh, sitting on the bench over there have been uh, at least sitting in, in this instance all day. And here's a dental. Well, we'll just remove that. <laughs> Look, people paying tribute without having to look at that. Actually, I should write down his name, though. Let's see. Oh, I already sent that name off. Okay. Cool. I wish I had Julia's powers like I do on a champion stream. On a champion stream, I can just be like, click, and you're gone forever. Well, not forever, but, you know, we can send you to the moon. Anyway. <laughs> When are we going to add uh, romance options into STO? Uh, not anytime soon, I imagine. But you never know. Uh, James E. Rob says, Grew up with the Trek movies in the 80s when I was 2 to 4. Watched the motion picture any chance I got. That is awesome. Hello! Hello. Welcome, welcome. Let me add your name. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Spartan is here. She's on the stream to uh, uh, help me learn, how to, learn to fly good later. It's going to help me 
Learn that, to fly real good. Is that why I'm here? Yep. I thought I was here for comedy hour, watching you fly a ship. Those are the same thing. <laughs> Both of those could happen. All right. Well, we're going to move on to... So I got a request to head to Vulcan 5, so we're going to go check Vulcan 5 out. As all of these instances are very quickly filled up. There's five instances of Vulcan right now. Full of people paying tribute. That's awesome. Uh, Cthulhu says Sparty is here for the hair fusion dance. That's true. <laughs> uh, only between we, when our hairs combine are we powerful enough to defeat Broly. That was a reference to the only Dragon Ball Z thing I've ever seen. Hmm. <laughs> I went and saw the movie in theaters a couple weeks ago. That sounds like more than I've seen. Whoa. I am backwards. <laughs> that was odd. Okay, here we are. <laughs> Uh, William Lace, if you missed the Hold Torch emote during the anniversary event, uh, it, it, unfortunately you missed it, um, but it'll likely be back for next year's uh, anniversary, if not put in the Phoenix box before then, if anyone ever gives Jet time to put things in the Phoenix box. I think the emote list is the emote list from last year with some additions, yeah. so if that's the case, I would, I would expect that to be true for next year as well. Yeah. We are uh, crashing Vulcan <laughs> with the amount of people we have to pay tribute. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I will throw up my, my torch. I like how when we redid the Because I remember we had this emote back in the City of Heroes days, which was, I think... I don't know, it was supposed to be like a pitchfork and mob torch kind of thing. But if people kept using it for this kind of thing, like in the last days of City of Heroes, there was a big... Uh, visual mm. where everyone was holding up torches, so I'm glad we we redesigned it to be, look a little bit more uh, respectful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, was there supposed to be a dance groove emote? I have no idea. Uh, incorrect, Max. When Neverwinter stream? I don't know. Ask Julia. <laughs> uh, someone said get some frost boots on. Yeah, they're on my other character. Uh, all right, we're. Being invited so we can go check out Vulcan 4. And so we shall. We Do you not have frost boots on all your characters, Mike? I do not have frost boots on all my characters yet. I'll admit, I don't either, but I have them on like 8 or 9. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, you also have, you know, 4,000 characters. Yeah. They invented the character limit for Jet. <laughs> That's hardly true. <laughs> We did hear. I did hear a funny story today, though, about how um, uh, you know we're trying to figure out ways to open up space in the game, uh, and there were certain players that just had so much stuff that their characters were wildly more bloated than other characters in the game, which I can't give any details on uh, in this hilarious story that was a hilarious story this morning. So I've just sort of told you an awkward thing, and now I can't take it back. It's out mm -hmm. there. Hey, look. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is how I felt when, right before I walked up here, Jeremy said, here are some things you can't talk about. And of course, you know, I can't say the things I can't talk about. No, you should list them uh, specifically. That's hilarious that he gave you a the, whole There list. was the first thing, and there was also the second thing. Okay. And I knew both of these things, but he did tell me. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing, the second thing, and the third thing. Uh, James Mace wants to know how you get... Uh, Frost boots, you can get them from the winter event every year. Uh, just complete winter event things. Enough to get enough trinkets to give yourself the, buy yourself the boots. Or spend a lot of low buy. Yeah, just during the winter event, you have to unlock the winter event store. It's, um, it's just an event project you do to unlock the store, and then it's good for you. Yeah. Hashtag thanks, Rami. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, should we look at some ship flying stuff? This is this is a wonderful tribute, but uh, yeah. Uh, is that uh, Doug Idaho wants to know that if now they have all the tardigrades, the fabric of reality is bending to their will, all of Thanos. Well, they do want to know that, all right. Yes. Uh, all right, Duncan, do do something to reshape reality. Come on, we're waiting. Either. It worked, and that included us not knowing what the past used to be like, <laughs> or it didn't work, and there's really no way of knowing. That's true. That's true. Okay. Well. That's fair. How do you do that thing? I keep seeing people do that, where they, they clone themselves that and they start dancing. That is the shard of possibilities. It's... 
I think it might be one of the featured episode rewards you have to do a featured episode rerun for, okay. which we haven't done in a while. Yeah, and if you're in combat, that. they'll go shooting things, and if you're not in combat, they will now just automatically dance. Interesting. Well, good to know. Also, they will dance at certain people if you target someone when you activate it. You'll just follow that person around. It's <laughs> You invented a trolling device? Me? Is that what you're telling me? I didn't invent this. <laughs> Who was responsible for this? I couldn't tell you. That was one of the things Jeremy asked me not to talk about. <laughs> really? That specifically? Maybe. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah, it's a 2800 reward, apparently. Ah. Um, people are asking if anyone's going to New Romulus. Let's find out by going to New Romulus. I actually don't know where the spot memorial is on New Romulus, so you have to direct me. But that helps to get to me into my Klaon character, whose ship we are going to be looking at flying today. So, how's life? <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. I've been been building some things that I'm not talking about on live streams yet. That's true, but you talked and to me about it in a meeting like an hour ago. That's one of the, yeah. That's one of the things. Yeah, was, I did. It was, it was a good good chat. Yep. Are, are you excited about that thing that we're not talking about? I am excited about? about that thing we're not talking about, especially because the console was my idea, and you ran with it, which is uh, lovely. Yeah, pretty much. Now if that console sucks, everyone's going to be like, it's Cal's fault! <laughs> Get him! To be fair, it was like eight people's idea. You were definitely the first person who suggested it that I heard of, but it was like eight people's idea. It, but it's my, my, I was the first. You were the first this. one. But <laughs> enough other people thought it was a good idea that they would also suggest it. Wait, do I have any Romulus transwarp on this character? I doubt it. Nope. Oh, new Romulus isn't that far. No. We all kind of start in the same area. Foxman says he loves our hairstyles. Uh, agreed. Um, Tide Skipper says uh, he's waiting for a Jets Flying lesson, Lessons gif. I think we need to get a Jets Flying Lessons, um, like, uh, TV show style intro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, as we were talking about recently, is that a get right on it, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is a get right on it. And that Good not... lord, Mike. Your starship is beaten up. Oh, what yeah. What are you doing? I forgot to heal it. Uh, dying a lot. Um... So, Don't at least do you that. know what they are. <laughs> um, That's why I was camped out at the Klingon shipyard, because when I finish a TFO, I repair all my injuries. You can repair them during the TFO. Right, but only if you have enough of some item that I never seem to have enough of. Components, which you can keep in your bank. Which you are potentially, I can't even tell you, have a lot of stuff in your inventory. Yeah, I know. But you yeah, you I don't, don't have, have enough the, of those. I think those are the major ones. Those might be the critical ones. Yeah, so that's all right. There'll be somebody on New Romulus who can fix that for me. I don't know if there's somebody on New Romulus. I know there's somebody in the Romulus Command Center. Well, close enough. So you should you should go to full strip slipstream throttle and engage the quantum slipstream. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why it wasn't doing that. Normally it does that. Well, not automatically also, when I pick a spot, but it does. Yeah, it's not. So this is this is a not my fault thing. It's not turning when point I point your ship downwards. Point my ship downwards. Yes. Now press the button. This is the workaround that I have been using. <laughs> um, I see. I also discovered that if I don't let it finish turning before I accelerate, it stops in the middle of the turn when I accelerate. Yeah, if you adjust your movement controls after telling it to autopilot somewhere, it will assume you no longer want it to autopilot there and cancel the request. Yeah. Also, if it finishes turning, it will throttle you up to full if you're on autofly somewhere. Yes, eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cute <laughs> Google says these red tags are buffs, right? Cal 2019. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, there's a reason I made sure they all displayed the injury icon a while back, because some of them had the status icon and it annoyed me. I was like, no, red, this is bad. We could also just not have injuries. We've had this discussion. <laughs> there was one time that I was dying a lot, and yes. I literally marched up to Jeremy and Jet's desk because it was like, why is this a thing? <laughs> From a game design perspective, why? <laughs> it was a fun and long discussion. 
Wait, do I go to the embassy or New Romulus? You go to New Romulus. The okay. embassy is a fleet holding. Okay. Uh, that's year. I have no idea what's going on there. Sorry, bro. I hope you like this cutscene, Mike. I've, I, I've seen this cutscene. It plays every time you go to New Romulus? Uh, I don't think it used to. I don't oh, know I if see. it still does. It I seems we fixed it. that. Good, because I got it again recently and I was annoyed. It was that one day that either I had an endeavor, it was the universal endeavors to go FO tagging. Mm. Don't you want an FO, Fred? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we are on New Romulus. Several people who were in the previous place have beaten us here. Because, you know, I was flying in the wrong direction for a while. And someone, because <laughs> this is a battle zone, someone is activating orbital bombardment. Orbital devastation beam is fun. It is fun. Not exactly, you know, um, appropriate for yeah. this, but fun, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are we going to get a T6 Hecta Bird of Prey? I don't know. <laughs> if you give me enough time, I will probably make every T6 ship you can think of and more. Enough time is probably just a century. <laughs> People can think of a large number of ships. Yeah. Uh, somebody was saying, uh, what's the jacket that I'm wearing? It is the uh, um, Voth. Voth jacket? No. What is this? Might be Vodwar. Von War. That's it. It's a Von War jacket. Uh, yes. <laughs> Philip117 says, are we going to get a T6 playable changeling? What I appreciate the most about that is that after maybe two years of being of his protest in front of Deep Space Nine, he moved his protest today to the Leonard Nimoy Memorial where he sat on a bench to ask politely for us to let him play a changeling. <laughs> it's the nicest protest we've ever gotten in the game. Yeah. 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 Uh, yep, we know you want the Oberth, guys. We know. We know. We know. It's a ship that could be in Star Trek, or potentially couldn't be in Star Trek. Someone yeah. wants it. Someone wants it. Uh, Bud Mulder, uh, thank you, Omega Armada and the Triples in Ecstasy podcast, for the greetings. Uh, let's see. Um, Cthulhu wants to know if I'm going for a DPS Disco Bird of Prey, or if I'm going to max def defense and run those protomatter tax... Tonsils. You ready for an answer that's going to make you groan and put your head in your hands? Yes. But no, that's a wonderful answer. <laughs> well, I have a I like universal endeavor to go fight in the Vagonkra battle zone. And uh, I also um, am really bad at fighting Zen Kefi. So maybe this is a great place for us to start. So here's what you do when you want to fight Zen Kefi. Don't. You, you shoot <laughs> the cruisers from the front, and then you shoot the rest of the ships from the front. That's how you beat the Zenkethi. And then in Gravity Kills, as you shoot the cruiser from the front, the rest of the ships shoot you in the side, and you explode. And then huh. you respawn, and then you shoot the cruiser from the front, and the rest of the ships shoot you from the side, and you explode. And, and eventually there, you just start cloaking and going and picking up particles and cloaking and going back, because there's no way you could fight these things. That part there about exploding. <laughs> Don't do that? <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> There, there are several ways not to do that. You can try blowing up the ships before they can manage to blow you up. Everyone keeps mentioning this is how I should build my ship. Blow them up first. Uh, do you think I haven't tried that? I, no, I certainly believe you've tried that. Uh, is you the flotilla around here? So I can just get... Yeah. Because I'm just going to go get my ship repaired before I go anywhere else. Can non like go person. on to the flotilla? I don't... I... I actually haven't tried. Okay, well, we'll find out. Today I, assume... I get to learn things on stream. This is... That's amazing. That almost never happens. <laughs> find out, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, someone said, hey, Cogtash. Hey. Several people said that. Yeah. I uh, don't see a way to... No, I don't think I can. All right. Uh, is there something near Gonkra that is... I can use to repair my ship? That's relatively near DS9, which should have that. Okay, well, let's do that. I don't remember exactly how close. It's in the Alpha Quadrant. Uh, Sir, 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 Sir Boulevard says in Gravity Kills, tractor beam repulsors into black hole. That's easier. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what would also be easier? Uh, if people would pick up the freaking particles. The amount of times that I've gotten into Gravity Kills and been the only one picking up the freaking particles. <laughs> I'm just like, this is the objective. 
Go get the particles. That's one of the objectives. It's That's only, the, the only way to win. <laughs> it's the one that completes the mission. Yes. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Reminds me how there's some of those who are like split up and everyone's just like, no, no, the someone else is going to leave the group. Yeah. I'm not going to leave the group. I, uh, the someone else is going. I was playing. It's not that close to D Space Nine. I was thinking of the Badlands battle zone. Uh, that's the well, close one. That's all right. We'll get that's, there. This is why I said it's in the Alpha Quadrant. Yeah. Um, what was I was thinking? Saying. Um, what were you saying just now before I made fun of you talking for about bad directions? People splitting up. Oh yeah. Um, we were. I was in Borg Disconnected. Uh, yeah. yesterday, And there was yeah, a. The um, uh, uh, I was like, oh, it doesn't look like anybody's. Um, going for the right hand one let me go check out and see what the situation is oh i'm dead right i'm just gonna stay in the middle then <laughs> ah yes the trick the trick of board disconnected is you don't actually shoot anything i see the first phase is the only one where you want to shoot anything like until you get to the dreadnoughts obviously you go shoot the dreadnoughts you kill the dreadnoughts mm -hmm. but the first phase maybe you blow stuff up you just try and like stay away from them as you as you rescue the ships the second phase there's there's the Voth, and then you just let the Voth fight the Borg, and everybody will just leave you alone because you're not shooting them. Hmm, I see. And so that's why it's really easy, in theory, to split up in Borg Disconnected, because you literally just don't get shot at, and you'll be fine. And so it's turn you... off your auto-firing, basically. Just don't target something and hit the, the fire all weapons button. <laughs> yeah. Which, which I, I know is... understand. I know this is difficult for our player base. <laughs> <laughs> but once you understand... Yeah. I've also been running into this in the, the new featured TFO. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to go by myself, and I will tell people this is the start, and then people will come with me, and I'm like, what part of by myself was not clear to you? <laughs> Uh, uh, Alexander Zafiris was asking about applying for working as an artist for STO. Um, we have a bunch of positions open. Uh, I don't think we have an, any artists open for STO right now. Maybe we have, we are looking for an environment artist still. Um, we also have stuff uh, in Magic uh, open, so just go to crypticstudios.com slash careers. I think it's careers. If it's not careers plural, then it's careers singular. Uh, and uh, all of our positions are open there. Uh, apply and show off your amazing work. Uh, and I don't accept friend requests on the stream, guys, just so I don't get swarmed with friend requests, but it's not because I hate you. Uh, Robert Stewart says, can we have Jet host a live stream one night? Jet is hosting a live stream right now. That is what she's doing. By myself? No. <laughs> <laughs> with Mike? Absolutely. It's fun. Uh, Zolman wants to know if Nathan has cheeseburger. Uh, the fact that you've done a reference from the internet when I was in college uh, is worthy of a cheeseburger you can have. Uh, Grumpy Old Nord, Nord says, uh, Zeph deserves a job in our PR department. Um, uh, Zeph, if you weren't in Canada, <laughs> we've had this discussion. <laughs> there have been times in this game's history where people have wanted to hire you, but you had to go and be Canadian. Like a darned maple leaf person. You no, know, I was talking to someone <laughs> just today over lunch who works at Cryptic and used to be in Canada, but the operative part there is used I to was be. talking to them today over at lunch Cryptic. and they used to be <laughs> in Canada. Yeah. Team ca blame Canada. Blame Canada. Um, someone wants to know when the winter, the Fakiri winter modules will be in the winter store because they don't seem to be there. Hmm. That sounds like a buck. That does sound like a buck. Look at this amazing paint scheme I put on my ship. It's so pretty. Sorry, continue. It, it is. Um, <laughs> you should tell me more, Mike. What what vanity shield, if any, are you currently using? I am. I don't believe using any vanity shield. But that's very clearly the Breen Super Cooled Impulse it Engines. It is indeed the Breen Super Cooled Impulse Engines, because they look awesome. And every time I fly with them, somebody's like, what are those engines? They look so cool. I wasn't going to make that joke. All right. Oh, I didn't even mean. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Thanks, <Hi>. Ryan. <laughs> You're not even here, but we feel your presence. All right. Where's the shipyard? That's security, so it's over here. Oh, my God. I learned part of how to navigate the ring. Hmm. Repair ship. Repair ship injuries. Wait for it to blow up and show me every ship I own. Repair all. Okay, cool. No, wait. No, I have to beam up before I can gonk or teleport. Also, it's probably still on cooldown. 
You're still on cooldown. For what? <laughs> I don't know. Probably several things. I was playing fairly recently. Uh, Sir Boulevard says, uh, so Jed, I want to say thank you for designing a gar the Gagarin's layout. Uh, he hearts miracle worker ships. Thank you. All of that means so much to me, because I also designed miracle worker ships. Uh, Victory is Life says that I remind him of the kid from AI now that he's all grown up, which I believe means Haley Joel Osment, uh, which I don't know if that's a compliment because I haven't seen Haley Joel Osment much since he was a child. I don't know the reference, so I definitely am not a help here. <laughs> uh, when does the chief, the, the DS9 chief engineer get a name? When he's finished making up to me, making it up to me. He knows what he did. The secret thing is there's actually 500 identical looking ones. We don't put the names of the 500 identical 500 uplets because <laughs> it'd be confusing. Just like the word, 500 uplets. Yeah. Uh, Jason Fink, no, you cannot currently play Star Trek Online on Mac officially. There are about to be people in Facebook chat, though, who tell you how to do it unofficially in ways we don't support. Uh, D. Ramsey says, hi, Cal and Jet got the purple hair color. It's been a couple of weeks, actually, since we both got the purple hair color. Yeah, I want to say this was about two and a half weeks ago for me, and mm -hmm. I don't know for you. Probably about three, yeah. I guess. I don't know. Uh, Locutus wants to know if we can, why we can't inject con blood into the lady that died during the 2600. Uh, actually, in the year uh, 2356, all existing samples of Khan's blood were stolen and presumed destroyed. I made that up. <laughs> One of the best things about Star Trek <laughs> is you can say things like that, and it sounds true. I was going to say, I have no idea. And then I'm like, what piece of Star Trek lore did I miss? <laughs> oh, the Mike Everything's an Announcement Star Trek lore. <laughs> yep. Uh, Captain Senti says, when are we getting the pet tardigrade Infinity Gauntlet? Uh, apparently Duncan owns that uh, per previous parts of the stream, so you'll just have to wait. ooh -wee. That's not that cool ship you're flying. It doesn't make noises in sector space. <laughs> Have you gotten to fly one of those yet? Uh, maybe. I don't think so. Okay. All, all of them are really neat, it, and they have this really cool part where they make just noises constantly from their engines. Yeah. Uh, are we looking for Xbox One game testers? We can pay them in Mountain Dew and peanut butter cups. Uh, I'll let our head of QA know. <laughs> did we have our hair done together? A two-for-one coupon? No, we did not. No. Nah. Sean Wurgis says not to quit my day job. I'll have you know I played Jean Valjean once. Anyway. Do I have rep, tra rep traits on my tune? I do have rep traits on my tune. Would you like to see what rep traits I have I don't understand tune? someone criticizing you. What happened to all my traits? I don't understand someone criticizing you on stream for streaming and then telling you not to quit your day job. This is, this my is day your job. day job. But no, they were singing criticizing dumb my singing songs. voice. Yes, but, but also, singing dumb songs on stream is yes. part of your day job. Yes, but also... Uh, what? I think you may have run into this trait bug that I have literally never run into, and I don't know how. This is the second time this has happened to me. All right, well, Jet, why don't you help me put together some traits for what so we're about Mike, to do? So, Mike, what do you do that I don't? All right. So I like a good day to die. Okay. And you're using cannon, so you should definitely stop the cannon training. Okay. Let's scroll down and see what else you've got that is probably worth the slot. Uh, you should definitely slot Duelist's Fervor. Good. I had that before. Um, let's see. Fleet Coordinator is good. It depends on how much queued content you play. I play a lot of queued content. Then you should be using it. Let's see. Um, Full stop. You probably don't need Helmsman on this ship, although I do like it on some ships. Okay. Let's, let's keep going. Do not want threat on this ship. No, but I do... I do Inocuous? somewhat like last... No, uh, no. Okay. Last Ditch Effort is nice if you're dying a lot and you press your buttons. Plus now I can use Go Down Fighting at any ability. Uh, I do cloak a lot on this ship. Is that worth it? Can you show me the details on that trade again? Yes. Probably worth it. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you open up Menacing? I want to say it does something that's useful here. No. No. Yeah, so this it, is all it, threatening stance stuff. It increases th your threat reduction when threatening stance isn't active. Oh. Alright. That's useful. Um, Nanite Repair Matrix? Yes. Operative. And that's it. We'll keep scrolling. There might be something better. 
point blank shot is better than a couple of those traits. Which ones should I remove? Uh, the one on the bottom left, innocuous. Was that the one you were just? No. Yeah, that's menacing. menacing. The the opposite of innocuous. Yes. <laughs> uh, point blank shot. Yeah. Um, let's see. This one I had before pseudo submission. Um, let me look at this bridge up. You have one heal slotted on this ship. Yes, but I have three down here. I don't know if that's going to work off of most of those. Oh, uh, okay. Um, All right, well, then that's not worth it. Yeah. I, oh, you should definitely be running self-modulating fire. Okay. Uh, uh, what I should would, I get rid of? I would get rid of a good day to die, because by the sound of things, you're just taking enough damage as it is. <laughs> um, uh, where did it go? Um, right there. Fire, what does that do? Ah, okay. So more damage. Yes. And uh, there was the trait just above that that I liked. Um, repair repair groups. Groups. It's a good defensive trait. Okay. Um, what well, would I get rid of? Probably last ditch effort. Which is the middle one? This one? Yes. Okay. So scroll, scroll down. Re Reslot last ditch effort because I want to show you something and everyone who's watching something. Yes, show me. So if you select the trait that we were talking about, repair crews. You can just drag it and drop it over to the trait you want to replace. Oh, that's way more useful. Yeah. All right, let's look at some starship traits. All right, from the top, you um, oh. black alert. Okay. I like black alert. Mm -hmm. um, Explosivity power to shields and extend shield grants secondary shielding. That would be nice. But if you were using those abilities, this is this is emergency power to shield. Oh, that's that science, science team. team. Never mind. Okay. Strike I like from strike shadows. shadows. I'm slightly biased there. Well, because you made it for this ship. <laughs> yes. Um, tactical tactical team is, is a good is one. Um, and then... Fadery. I did have that already on the ship, oh. which is pretty fun. Is it oh. silly? Uh, well, I talk to Robert sometimes, and he likes to describe himself as Robert Cryptic Reedy FF. Ruda, because um, the trait was once ranked as FF on a scale of A through D. <laughs> um, okay. So let's look at the other traits you have unlocked. The only one of these that looks like it really is likely to benefit you is probably reciprocity, although I wouldn't like counting on it. What about pilfered power? That sounds like it could be useful for this kind of press the button it are you pressing those buttons ah no i am not reciprocity it is all right all right space reputation is already set but if you want to look at what i've got we can all right so you i would unslot a base of tactics and which was that okay and what's the fourth trait is that the um that is superior shield regen Talking space. Oh. It's pretty um, shield repair, yeah. Yeah. So the two traits I would be most inclined to slot here, um, it's the one at the exact top of your screen right now, precision. Oh, and it's ranked two because you've been doing your apps. Yes. Okay. And I don't remember what it's called, so someone in chat might be able to help me before you find it, but there's the Dyson Reputation Critical Severity one. That... I don't have Dyson rep reps, so I that would be see. why. All right. uh, the, the, the reps I have uh, are Delta to Tier 2, uh, no, sorry, Gamma to Tier 1, uh, New Romulus and Omega to Tier 6, Lucario to Tier 5, and Competitive War Games to Tier 4. Almost okay. 5. All right, so let's, let's scroll through that list again. All right, can you keep scrolling? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Yeah, that one's not so great. Okay. But let's see. It's not that it's bad. It's just there's a bunch of other useful traits. Oh, that's only PvP. It's not only PvP. The but PvP it's a player takedown. Right. That's a short description. Ah, uh, okay. It's a five percent chance against non-players. Got it. Can you go wave your arms? <laughs> Also, can you turn on that light <laughs> that I totally forgot? Yeah. 
And um, you don't have any other active rep traits? I uh, those are the only three active rep traits I have. All right. And that sounds like a plan. All right. Let's go into Gongra. This is over here, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I was like, it looks like a nebula, but it's really far away, and I knew it just flew past it. I've never gotten to see my hair just flip like that when I sit down. It's kind of funny to see yourself on a delay. Isn't it cool? Yeah. All right. Yes. Thank you, Rodek. I appreciate it. Okay. So there's nobody here but me and this guy. We should probably team up. You probably can't. Statistically, that person is playing a fed ship. No, I mean not, like, um. team up. I mean, like, we should go to the same zone. I shouldn't fly off like a cowboy. Mm. We, I should follow him since we cannot communicate to wherever the heck he's going. Either his ship is slow or he's flying... No, he stopped. I... Okay. Ah. Well, there's somebody else in the zone who I can team up with. They're in a different instance. Well, then let's go to their instance. There are a lot of people in this. There's a lot of people in that instance. That's much better than wherever I am with the one person. Thank you, whoever sent me that friend request. <laughs> that was a team invite, because you accepted it, because you don't accept friend requests on stream. But team invites are a different story. On occasion, I do. All right. Yes, thank you. All right. So where would they be? Oh, they're all here. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's moved yet. <laughs> Hi, guys. Okay, I'm just going to take off full impulse since apparently no one else is flying at that speed. <laughs> and the worst thing you can do, I've learned, is be the first one to get to the combat. <laughs> you should be cloaked because you're not actively shooting things, so you should be cloaked. Okay, so that's something that's... I should know for this ship, just always be cloaked if I'm not shooting? If you're in a ship with a cloak and you're not shooting, you should probably be cloaked. Why should I probably be cloaked if I'm in a ship with a cloak? Because then you can decloak on people and also then you get the drop on people. Because you want to enter combat by shooting someone. You don't want to enter combat by somebody else shooting you. Understood. I'm on the side of this, so that wasn't the best plan, but I'll still shoot it with a lot of stuff. Uh, well, I can't really tell where my target went. Oh, it he's died. dead. Good. You good, have, good. You have went teammates well. that are shooting things. Good job, teammates. This is what the Gonker Battle Zone looks like when there's people in it. I'm going to cloak and shoot things. Ah, yes, there's 28 instances of it because there's the, 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 the Universal, the universal endeavor. endeavor. Yep, That makes sense. I remember playtesting this back in the day. <laughs> not really understanding how a, a battle zone worked. All right, I should be cloaked because I'm not shoot, actively shooting something. And now I will decloak and murder faces. Yes. You. Ooh, someone press... else is using my, my, <laughs> my console. I will now use my console. Whoops. Thank you. Might want to press what? What were you going to tell me to press? I was going to tell you to press emergency power to weapons. So, there is a cycle, or a, I'm fairly confident this is the build you posted to Stow Builds the other day, right? Yeah. And, and you've gotten help from Cthulhu and some other people on, on getting this good ship set up. So you've got Ox to Bat, you've got your technicians, you've got all that. Indeed, indeed. How much has anyone talked to you about ability rotations? So, I've heard the term before, but Jet, please tell me in more detail. So, ability rotation is a term that people have used to say, there's these abilities, and I want to have a cycle in which I activate them. The, the core of an ox to bat build, as players tend to call it, is two copies of the auxiliary power to the emergency battery skill. and which is this guy right here, for those of you watching at home. And three technician duty officers on active space duty with the active ability that when you activate auxiliary power to the emergency battery, or ox to bat as people call it, that it reduces the cooldowns on your bridge officers. So the idea is, like Mike just did, you press all your buttons, and then you press your auxiliary to battery so that the cooldowns go thunk around the timer, like they just did. Like I did. I did. I have been doing that, but I haven't been doing it immediately. 
Uh, I've been doing, oh, the cooldown's almost over. Let me hit Ox to Bat. So I see where the mistake was. So you want to hit Ox to Bat right after you finish activating your main cycle of buffs. Um, and you have a large number of types of buffs on this ship, two of which are emergency power abilities. Emergency power abilities have a bit of their own rotational nature because every emergency power ability has a 45 second cooldown, a 30 second duration, and a 15 second cooldown shared with different emergency power abilities, and a 30 second cooldown shared with other copies of the same emergency power. So what this means is that every 15 seconds you can activate an emergency power. So if you keep, if you have a way to activate a to reduce its cooldown, then you can stagger emergency power to weapons 15 seconds later, emergency power to engines, and then go back to emergency power to weapons 15 seconds later, and have the both of them up pretty much 100% of the time. This is a lot of blinding white noise on yeah, the screen. Yeah, I believe people are using the um, summon the, the torchbearer thing that we added. I uh, believe so. In the Battle of the Binary Stars. It uh, pops up a lot, because it's, a, I think, a fairly useful power and creature summon. <laughs> Wow, those effects are slowing down the game a bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, excuse me while I drag these said Kefi. <laughs> so, there's... Sometimes I drag people on Twitter and sometimes I drag people in space. There's also, um, there's a couple of reasons you want to keep some of those buffs up all the time. One of them is just... Pressing the buttons pretty much all at the same time allows you to help make sure you're using all of the buffs as much as possible because more sp more time spent using buffs is going to be more damage than less time spent using buffs. But the other reason is you get some multiplicative stacking out of some of them. If I ha let's multiplicative throw out some, means it multiplies, folks. Let's throw out some really absurdly fake numbers here for the sake of making math simple. Okay. Let's say that Cannon Scatter Volley doubles your damage, and let's also say that Attack Pattern Beta doubles your damage. Okay. These are probably both incorrect, but let's say them for the sake of simple numbers. Sure. If you activate one, and you wait for it to wear off, and ten seconds later you activate the other, you've done twice your base damage for the entire encounter. If you activate them both at the same time, and then you have ten seconds where neither of them are active, you did four times your normal damage for one part, and your normal damage for one part. So you actually did two and a half times your base damage instead of just two times your base damage. Okay. So if you have buffs that are doing different things, like emergency power to weapons is doing a boost to your, your weapon's power and your weapon's damage. Cannon scatter volley is increasing your weapon base damage. I think no, rapid fire definitely is. Scatter volley is giving you more Oops. shots, which is a wow. different method. Attack pattern beta is doing a debuff. The more of these things doing different methods of buffing your damage, the more you want to be pressing them all at the same time to make sure you get the maximum effectiveness out of them. Yeah. If you have ones that are doing the same type of things, like if you have Attack Pattern Omega, which is the same kind of self-buff that Emergency Power to Weapons is, then activating them at the same time doesn't itself give you more or less damage than activating them independently, but it will increase the benefit you get from anything else you have going on at the same time. Okay. All right. So just basically keep your cooldowns low. Mm -hmm. Because math said so. Yeah. Uh, a lot of abilities are useful damage buffs that, especially on a tactical ship like this, the more of them you can have active, the better you are. And so a fair amount of what I guess I would call build theory is devoted to making sure you have the best abilities possible active the most amount of the time. Now, in this situation, I want to, even though some of my abilities and traits are based off my ship going fast, uh, because there's a lot of guys in front of me and I don't want to fly past them, uh, I actually want to slow down my ship as I'm entering the engagement, yeah? Yeah. Especially on a faster ship, I don't tend to fly them at full throttle in combat. Um, the exception to that would be if it also turns well and you're using beam arrays, you might want to just do quick broadsides around a target. Mm -hmm. But that's also going to vary as to whether or not it's something like a Zenkethi, where you just always want to be shooting it from the front and broadsiding is a disadvantage. Or if it's something where you're not doing enough damage past the shields, and so broadsiding just means you're continuously weakening all of the shield facings. Got it. If you circle around it. That was a great use of rules there to get in front of that target. Thank you. 
I really, really like pilot maneuvers. I do too. <laughs> they are nice. they are exceptionally fun to fly ships with them. Wow. You can mash the F key here. Oh right. I did say mash it. <laughs> this Ah, Jet, it's not going away, Jet! You're flying into the range of new objects. There's too much loot! It's like a borderlands! What is flying behind me right now? I think someone has set their fighter pets to escort you. Those look to be... <laughs> um, I... Thanks! Those are some Iconian pets. I forget which ones they are. Yeah. Uh, so Hippie John says, Jed, it's been a while since we've seen a new one, but what things do you attribute to Romulan ships that differ in a design sense from Fed KDF? And now Geminar. So the obvious mechanical uniqueness of Romulan ships is all of the singularity abilities and what comes with that. Um, the baseline is there's a singularity core slot, there's the five special singularity abilities that come with that, and there's the reduced base power. As far as design principles... Um, if I assume fed ships are a baseline just to have any baseline to kind of work off of, Jem'Hadar ships have uh, exceptional shielding relative to a non-Jem'Hadar ship. Klingon ships, I think, are... Klingon ships are going to be inclined to lean more tactical and less science-y than a normal ship. Um, I don't know if Romulan ships have had quite the same tendency, although I don't know that Romulan ships have been... Exceptionally sciencey. I think that might be more of a coincidence of what ships have been built rather than an actual design tendency like it is for Klingon ships. Um, in short, beyond the, the mechanical uniqueness of the singularity abilities, I don't know that Romulans have as strong of a design um, uniqueness from, from other ship types. Um, one of the other if things, you were going to give Romulans a design uniqueness, what would you? Uh, how would you approach that? Species in our game that have their own types of ship don't tend to have incredibly pronounced differences, right? Because um, everybody should be flying something with somewhat parity. Yeah, in general, like um, if you take Vodvar for example, because I just saw a Vodvar ship fly past me. Those ships have tended to be slower and a bit hard-hitting, but sometimes that's just an artifact of we made three of these ships as opposed to the much larger number that we've made for our playable ships. Please, Jesse, pull up a chair. Don't hide in the corner. Hello. <laughs> I don't believe I have a Jet and Jesse uh, uh, name tag, so we'll have to just remember that Jesse Heinig, senior content designer, is here. Fine people know me. Last time you were on the stream, I think everyone was like, Oh my god, it's the guy who did Fallout! So, you know. Oh, not that again. <laughs> You're probably going to have to scoot closer, though. I am 100% sure they can't see you. It's fine. What was Sorry, Jet, I'll just Jet and I don't have lean personal in space I need issues. To. We have lots of personal space issues. Hi, Jet. But I hey, we're in the Gonkra, uh, the Gonkra Battle Zone, Jesse, which you recently played around with a bit, didn't you? I did a little bit of, of tweaking to it. So we had that whole feedback thread thing where I mm -hmm. sent you all the feedback that was mostly one or two things said over and over, but said over and over well. <laughs> so, one of the, the big changes was the zone has essentially a, a capture timer for each of the different areas in it. It says after you've had this area captured for a certain amount of time, enemies will attempt to recapture it. Um, the enemies here typically wipe out the allied ships that get sent to hold them, which means that players have to generally be on the spot to make sure that enemies don't wind up recapturing those. So one of the, the most noticeable changes is that I increased that capture timer by 50%, so it takes longer for the enemies to respond to recapture. Yeah, because areas. previously, players, at least the player experience I was being told was that, you know, mm -hmm. people were, uh, uh, Zenkethi were coming back and recapturing the zones pretty much instantly. What other what other uh, uh, changes to the feedback did you make? Well, oh, not changes um, feedback, changes based on the feedback. Changes well, uh, a couple of the the zone markers for the map were misplaced or placed incorrectly. So you'd be like, "Hey, I'm in control of this zone. Why is it showing up as red on the overhead map?" 
or we just captured this zone, and now this zone appears as captured. So I hunted all of those down and tried to fix them. <laughs> Made some fixes to the, the if asteroid. If you're having a mental image of Jesse uh, with a rifle uh, stalking bugs in the code, uh, you're not far off. I think that right. was also Jesse's mental image. It's more, more of a machete than a rifle. But That's true. <clears throat> um, the asteroid soccer game, uh, the UI was still saying that, oh, you have to get ten soccer balls across the finish line, asteroids. Uh, so... It's only three. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> fixed that. We also fixed up the costumes so that the asteroids are a bit smaller. Um, that does make them a little harder to see, but it also means that they're less likely to occlude your entire you know, view while you're trying to push one of them with your tractor beam. What is that beautiful ship that just flew by me? That one slightly to the right? That yeah. is the obelisk carrier. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, I forgot to cloak while I wasn't shooting. But you're remembering what you've forgotten to do, and I haven't, <laughs> I haven't had to tell you more than once about that, because mm. you keep remembering that you forgot to do it. <laughs> Sooner or later, that you saying that enough is going to translate to you remembering to so, do it. So, Jet, do you build up, when you're making a ship like this, you know, to avoid having to go click, 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 click all the time throughout combat, do you have, like, uh, macros or hotkeys, stuff like that, to use for that? Because I remember uh, one of the previous um, Jet builds you made for me, Spacebar was mapped to do, like, 15 things at once. Mm -hmm. So... A lot of people use a spacebar bind. I personally, um, I have a large number of individual keys mapped to abilities, and I've just gotten good at hitting the corresponding key or control key combination to fire off my abilities one at a time. Um, in my personal opinion, I think that's the best way to do it, but spacebar binds are a large step above trying to click abilities one at a time. <laughs> so, um, so, so you could do that too. You, you can certainly do that, too, and I, I think it's also a question of if the brain power spent training yourself to know which, which instinctive key press fires off which abilities is, is worth it, because that is an amount of effort more than hitting spacebar, and there's only so many things you can pay attention to at a time. That's true. On my old ship, I used to forget to launch my uh, pets all the time. <laughs> People on stream would be like, what are you doing? That's what your ship is for. Ah, and that's why you're not flying carriers anymore, so people don't remind you. That, <laughs> and also, I really like this ship. Like, I loved my my uh, Jem'Hadar uh, carrier. I may go back to it someday, but just the first time I flied this ship. I flied this ship. The first mm -hmm. time I flied this ship. Um, first right? time you load it? First time I, the first time the ship hit my hit that flow, yo. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, I was just like, this is this is the most fun I've had flying a ship, and I need to do this more. Please give me this bundle immediately so I can fly this ship because it's amazing. And by give me, I mean I bought the bundle because the ship is amazing. <sighs> good. I'm I'm really glad. I've heard a, a lot of good feedback about the ship from from people flying it. You sound like you had more to say. <laughs> no, it's, 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 I like hearing good feedback about my ships. Um, I, uh, I like hearing good yeah. things and happiness. It's fun. <laughs> Duck and Idaho cool says he, he, clicks, he clicks manually, but then he learned how to use the foundry editor, so maybe he's just crazy. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's an incredibly well-designed and intuitive... <laughs> I can't finish it. Yeah, learning to use the Foundry Editor is really an exercise, and if I can overcome these controls, I can do anything. Right? <laughs> and I, they have. <laughs> Jesse, you've used the Foundry Editor before, I and have. the Mission Editor. Which I have. one do you think is easier? Well, I mean, easier is relative, depending on your goal. Fair. If your goal is to create a mission with 15 pages of text and five groups of dudes that you shoot, then the Foundry Editor is definitely the way to go. If your goal is to have a frustrating afternoon where you generate crash logs four <laughs> times and then you push something to the server that the software says, yeah, maybe don't do that to our servers, it's definitely our mission editor. <laughs> and there you have so it. The truth right from the horse's mouth. Uh, yes. What I love, too, about this is that we're only seeing Jesse's shoulder. There is no, there is none of Jesse's face in this game at all. Behold my power. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Nemshake90 asks, Jet, uh, why do non-battle cloaks exist? Aren't all cloaks battle cloaks? So, battle cloak means a cloak that's usable during combat. Uh, so, one of the things about cloaks is cloaks drop your shields. Not all ships are set up to 
be able to deal with or have captains that were willing to deal with just losing their cloaks in the middle of shooting at someone and having them shoot back at you, losing their shields. shields. Yes. yes. Um, so that's my understanding of why we differentiate battle cloaks from other cloaks. Other cloaks. Also, semantically, like, all of these ships are fighting in battles, so why are they not all battleships? My ship destroyed things. Why isn't it a destroyer? Right? Yeah. I like to cruise around on my ship. It should be a cruiser. Uh -huh. I, I hey. love our ship naming conventions. I have had so many positive naming conventions about the fact that I love the way we name ships, and you can definitely tell I'm being serious. Yeah. So somebody just uh, rage quit the stream because we're not uh, teaching as good as three or four YouTubers they named. Uh, you, get, people, go watch those guys. That's cool. Yeah. Like... It's called the stream to f learn to fly ships good. I'm not a, you're, I shouldn't be expecting master classes here. Yeah. I'm I'm on a live stream with Mike to to entertain, to talk about various questions that Chad is asking and to to have fun with yeah. people. Yeah, um, yeah. if uh, if I was sitting down teaching Mike how to fly a ship, we wouldn't be distracted by chat and I would have come in a prepared environment. Um Wait, you knew this stream was happening for at least 24 hours. What do you mean you're not prepared? <laughs> yeah, I was building things that I'm not talking about. Uh, I have Drop everything for my entertainment, Jed. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just uh, here yeah. to troll you two. You, you want to talk to the people who write my schedule? Because if you can just get me scheduled for teaching Mike to fly ships good, I will happily do that. So, uh, Rafe Shadow says cattle cloak is the way all ships can work. I don't know if that's a typo or if there's a way you can cloak cows. Um, if you get me a playable T6 cow in the game, I can probably put a cloak on it. Cattle cloak. Cow level confirmed. <laughs> Tier 7 cows. Is someone else already doing this? Is that why I can't? Okay. Yeah, they're exclusive interacts. Are you familiar with the tab targeting system in our game, Mike? Yes, I'm using the tab targeting system. Okay. I wish the tab targeting system would target the thing in front of me. So, there is an option in our game called Tab Target Selects Off-Screen Attacker that you might have enabled, and from the sound of it, might not want enabled. Where is that option? If you go to the Controls tab, which is hidden under your Red Alert option, you have Tab Select Off-Screen Targets, which is currently set to Off, so that kills that idea. Okay, so maybe it's because it's still selecting threatening targets first? Yeah, uh, it might be. I just know that I well, one of the things I love about playing on console is what I am pointing at is what I am going to shoot next. Mm, yeah. You just need to execute your tactical officer. <laughs> it's not that kind of Klingon ship. We're pirates. We have codes of honor. <laughs> oh, oh, that's we're how like a democracy. Work. Yeah, except for I'm the captain and everyone follows. That's what I say. Right. And if they try and vote someone else in, I cut them out in half. Ouch. So like a real pirate democracy. <laughs> <laughs> pirate democracies were an actual thing. I know. It's crazy. One of the things I love about piracy. I love how they do uh, that one ep that one of the first episodes. Actually, I think the first episode of Black Sails. They call for a vote, and it ends with stabbing because pirates. <laughs> there we go. So one of the things that's dangerous for your ship that mm -hmm. you probably run into before is warp core breaches. Mm -hmm. And so when you fly right at someone, and you blow them up because you're being a good good raider good deep, captain. Sir. One of the things I like to do then is figure out which direction my next enemy is in and immediately barrel roll that direction. That way, as you can be there, if my next enemy is to the right and I barrel roll to the right while holding the turn right key, I'm facing a lot closer to them, I've moved a lot closer to them, and I just jumped away from where the warp core breach is about to be so it doesn't kill me. Yeah, warp core breaches are one of those things that I always, like, everyone's always like, stop flying the warp core breaches, but I'm like, I have to be close to these ships to kill them. <laughs> and that's why you have pilot moves. Yeah. yeah. Also, that's why you have an insane amount of impulse speed on these ships, because especially with emergency powered engines active. Which I almost never use. Is that something I, you should use in combat? I mostly use it to get close to things. So I mentioned earlier about the emergency power rotation. Yeah. So the theory behind this is you have emergency powered engines and emergency powered weapons just always active. But you have to be pressing buttons a lot more than you're currently doing to get anywhere near that. <laughs> I see. Okay, well, oh. I will attempt to keep that up. This does look like a ton of fun. I'll have to try it on my KDF side. This ship? Oh, yeah. God, I love this ship. Well, I'm currently flying a carrier. So. <laughs> <laughs> Join us in the, the basically playing one of your carrier pets. It will, <laughs> feel. It will be a bit of a, of a change. Yeah. So 
the idea is just whenever one of these runs out, click on it and keep it going? Yes. Okay. Also, it's probably the same thing with Ox to Bat. Actually, it's the same thing with anything there that's not blue or reverse shield polarity. Actually, I no, should take keep, it back. I should keep my Heligog uh, engineering yeah, team no, on all the engineering time? engineering team also, no. Okay. Someone sent you hazard emitters. That person is a nice person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't have those anymore because the build Cthulhu built for me replaced it with Hold Together 1, which I think does the same thing. Just a bit, I just need to be going fast. It does a lot of the same things. Do we have any traits that are like a reciprocal buff where when someone uses a nice power on you, it uses a nice thing back on them? Um, that would I be haven't cool. done that. Mm. We should do that. We might do that. Mm. We've done I'm going to activate all my clicky damage things over here. I don't know what half of them do, but I'm activating them all. We've done uh, some of the inverse of that, which is when I do a nice thing to you, I also get a nice thing. Mm. I think the <laughs> mirror the actual key... inverse of that I think is I do a nice thing to you and then you die, <gasps> okay, <that's... laughs> or and then I die. Okay, I we, we did that concept from a different angle. Is what I'm right. right. <laughs> we also did an angle. Thank you for healing. You explode. <laughs> <laughs> hazard emitters now targets foe and blows them up. Uh, Nebshake ninety it says hazards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nebshake ninety says uh, cattle cloak and blue. Um, Improves moverability. Ugh. So good. So good. Oh, why did I do that? How you hide scrolls in upstate New Jersey. I also have a weird thing, and I don't know if you guys are aware of this at all. I don't need. It's a bug that doesn't exist up here, only on my downstairs computer, mm -hmm. where I have to click down at the bottom half of a button. If I try and click at the top half, it won't click. Ah. I know what that is. You know what that is? I think that is your, especially if this is running locally. Yeah, and no, it happens on my actual live character. I still think that's the offset oh, that's by cool. console dimensions. Because uh -huh. uh. I, I used to have that issue. Okay. And that's what it was. Which probably means none of our players are running into that because they're probably not yeah. cheating console things on PC. <laughs> One hopes. Yeah. Hey, babe, you're on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> say say hi to Jesse and Jet. What? Say hi to Jesse and Jet. Oh hi Jesse and Jet. Sorry. Say hi to the internet. <laughs> Hello, disembodied voice that is driving. Hello. Uh, everything okay? Yeah, everything's totally fine. You just need to pick up your daughter tonight. That's all I need to say. Yeah, I I was planning on it. Uh, but thank you for letting me know, and I love you. All right, love you. Bye. Bye. Touching personal moments. <laughs> uh, my poor wife. I put her through such such things. Yeah. Just by being married to me. She actually came in stream chat one time. Uh, oh, now now chat is on. I've got a fever, and the only prescription is more cattle cloak. Uh oh. Uh, Duncan, I need the fan art. I needs it. So on next week's stream, when we. That's right. I'm not supposed to talk about what's on next week's stream because we haven't <laughs> announced it yet. Right. <laughs> we don't talk about unannounced oh. content or systems. Um, I think Duncan is trying to uh, schlep off a lot of the concept art onto me now. But <laughs> I have to get a set of crayons, apparently. Yeah, you do. Okay. Because you, you said on Twitter you were doing art, and so that's what happens now. Mm. Well, I used a tablet for the first time. Um, mm. I'm very bad at it. We have one of those at home, and I keep wanting to bring it in to use just for Photoshop stuff, because the amount of times that I have to very carefully with a mouse draw around something to cut mm -hmm. it out of an image, I'm like, I think it'd be easier with a pen. Photoshop has tools that are supposed to make that smart and easy for you, so you can, like, drag it wherever you want, and it just jumps to the right thing. Wow. Yeah. Uh, a um, friend of mine, Matt Colville, once famously said that uh, one of these days there's going to be a, a release of Photoshop. <clears throat> I'm doing my best Matt Colville. <laughs> One of these days soon, there's going to be a release of Photoshop that only has one button to <laughs> fix my stuff. I want... We used to joke when I was uh, working in a film editing house uh, that Final Cut needed to just learn read my mind mode, where you just sit there and stare at the screen and the editing begins. <laughs> uh, I just need to quickly say, because Chad is sort of semi-jokingly uh, running out of control, I don't think we're actually announcing anything next week. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, we're not announcing any new content next week. Uh, so, so don't don't let that hype train leave the station, please. So what I, I don't want people to come on the stream and get very right mad at me. Nice. What I am reminded of is uh, one of my first days here, because um, I, I was talking to Maria at her desk, mm -hmm. and she launched Star Trek, and it and it just had this the Star Trek badge symbol 
with the fix button snapped over it. And I was like, you literally have a fixed Star Trek button. <laughs> and so what it is is we have, we have a term called the fix branch, which is not the development branch. It's the, the live branch where you go to fix stuff. Yeah. And if you're on the, the fix branch install, it just depends the fix button over it so you know what you're launching. But... But it was the fix button for Star Trek. Literally, it was That's so amazing. great. I do, I do need to 3D print the the the, uh, um, the switch. You know, the switch that I can throw to do the oh, thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Jesse, what more do we need to do in this nebula, or should I move on to other content? Uh, move on to other content. Okay. It should you know show people a good time? <laughs> for a good time, call. <laughs> Free Gemini escorting me I'm right now. I'm just saying the live stream is kind of like a blind date with 30 people that you don't know and. <laughs> Don't, aren't really seeing, but you're hearing everything they say. Magic Man, uh, is this like a triple date then? I, guess I will so. bring a cowbell to the hey. stream next week if it will help. I don't know that it will help. Mike, why can't I join a random queue? You're in a team with someone who's in a map that doesn't let them do that. I'm suspecting. How do I That's leave? That, the top left button of that one. The, no, no, down, down, oh, or that one. The That's right. Walk. <laughs> how, are, how are you doing on your endeavors? Inquiring minds want to know. Uh, my endeavors are not... Wait, I can't exit the random. Hit, so. hit the X in the top right. Hit the decline button. Uh, that is how I'm doing on my endeavors. All right. Yeah. I mostly... I'm most of, of my day is one day I log in and I, I, do, I do like a random queue. Oh. Huh. Plus, a lot of the time I get stuff like this where I'm like, I don't have random Tetrion or Disruptor weapons sitting around I can just equip onto the ship. See, that's why I keep some ships in dry dock that are like a Tholian ship or whatnot. Hmm. This is my Tetrion build. So I've got, got a pro tip for people out there. You're already queued for something? No, no, you're not. If you have a Romulan character, just grab a scimitar... Grab the elite Romulan drone ships or whatever. Just, just grab. Yeah, a no, just start with the scimitar, <laughs> and then just <laughs> step one. Launch get the real drone good ships shit. and fly against whatever enemies you want. That was an because interesting intro to this map I've that I haven't not seen before. Seen that one before either. And then what you do is the drone ships will just do the damage type of whatever enemy you're shooting, so they'll just get those space damage endeavors done for you really easily. Yeah. Just, just warp into like some advanced patrol. Spend about three minutes in there. Oh god, all my shields 000. are gone. Speaking of, what weapons are you Freaking using board. on this thing? I am using the uh, sensor-linked phaser cannons. Ah, okay. Are you using the Beyond the Nexus set? I am not. You might want to look into that. There's this thing um, about me that mm -hmm. you should know. Mm -hmm. That's that I hate playing the same thing more than once. Okay. <laughs> you should be going <laughs> at full impulse. Towards that cube up there, Mike. Towards that cube up there? Yeah. Why don't I just ignore it and destroy the easy to things that destroy things that are because the it'll kill you. That's why you shoot it. But if it'll kill me, I don't want to shoot it. It'll kill you either way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand, Jeff. You you want to kill the thing with weapons before you kill the thing without weapons? Okay. Well, it looks like we we done killed it. Yes. Yeah. Now you can easy peasy. transform. But don't attack the transformer until all the little things are done. Otherwise, one of the cubes, well, the spheres, will destroy the trans, will heal the transformer, and then everything is terrible. So, doesn't matter. Well, I suppose it's technically possible for it to not take damage before any of the nanite spheres show up. But the easy way to to not fail this objective is just to blow them up. I know. Yeah, before. But also, the get you there. know, it's another great way to to, uh, to not fail this objective. I'm waiting for you. Yeah. You guys go over here now. Yep. <laughs> I'm that's, taking you away. There it is. <laughs> and that's oh, another use yeah. case for that button. Uh, it's got so many use cases. Yeah, that's just excellent. It's a thing of beauty. It, it feels great. Oops, wrong, the one I meant to hit. Oh, well. We'll single target damage somebody. Does that work to uh, drive Zenkethi ships into the hypermass and gravity kills? I haven't think? tried it, but it might. It works on pretty much everything. Nice. Um, it's not really big ships like a tactical cube. It won't move. Right. Yeah. But because reasons. Because well, gravity. Well, you see, it's gravity, space. and those are big things, yeah. so they don't respond as much to. So gravity. I have this book that I've been reading my daughter that might help you with this, Jesse. And it's called Quantum Physics for Babies. <laughs> I see. Uh, and uh, so this ball has mass. Mm -hmm. More mass, more force. Cloak. Oh. <laughs> no, I was gonna say pilot maneuvers because you can't pilot maneuvers while cloaked. Oh well. Wee! Yeah. I'll do the other cloak. Ah, oh, yes, the massive science button. Hey, but you know what? It's a cloak where I can fire my weapons. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
What's oh. the experimental weapon you have equipped? I don't. Think it is the know. protomatter sheller, which I was ah. told if you have that, of course it goes there. And so yeah. it was something that everyone knew. And so I believe that weapon was probably, has the kids say, real good. <laughs> we need to kill the generator to the left still. I, I, yes. Ah, good. I will destroy it with fire. Ah. <sighs> Yeet! <laughs> and then I believe someone already blew this up. No, it hasn't taken any damage. And we failed the optional objective. I have never not failed the optional objective on this particular queue. That is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, it's getting regenerated by one of those regeneration probes. Yeah. Oh. That's what the green lines going over to it are. Oh. Green, green normally means healing, unless it means plasma damage. Or right. disruptor damage. <laughs> right. Well, you know, there's so many powers in this game and only so many colors. Yeah. Yeah. We need to invent another color. We need, no, what we need to do is just uh, get people to be able to see more colors. There's a lot of other colors out there. We should include that in character creation. Yeah, there's tetrachromats. Mm -hmm. We're thinking we're thinking of rewriting some of the, the species uh, descriptions and character creation. We should just include the number of colors they see. Mm -hmm. That's a default issue that yeah. everyone would like. Clicky, clicky uh, things. If only I had time, I would. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do a little work on this. Give it a little love. I, I remember that idea. Yeah. I liked that idea. Well, yeah. what? No, you probably can't tell me the idea. Never mind. Yeah, but lock trajectory. A it power was a good idea. I didn't understand till Jed explained it to me, and now I use it all the time because it's great. This it is, is another one of Jeremy's great ideas. It's yeah. fantastic. One thing I do love about the systems team is that, except for I think John, which I guess is one third of the team these days, but you are all people who really like grew up loving this game as much as you can. Well, Jeremy didn't grow up loving this game. You did, because I think you were 12 when it came out. Yeah. Uh, Cryptic is close to as old as I am. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <sure. laughs> uh, but anyway, you've, you've, the people who really understand the game and are building things to make said game better and more yeah. fun. Because yeah, Jeremy used to be on a podcast before he came here. Was right. Jeremy on Stoked? I've never heard that before every time he's come on this show. Yeah, I know, right? It's... That's, that's, that's brand new information to me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really surprised that you've not heard that <laughs> many of Jeremy's agrees. So today, Mike learned. <laughs> oh. It just gets funnier each time. How long can we drag out this joke? Why don't oh like why don't Klingons see purple or green? Um, Klingons do see purple and green, and in fact, Klingons uh, love purple and green because it's the best color combination. And I came up with it uh, long before people were calling it the Joker colors. That's not true. It's been the Joker's colors since like the '60s, but. I want to feel better about the fact that I really love how those colors look together and not always feel like I'm cosplaying the Joker when I make characters in games. Because <laughs> the only other color green works really well with is red, and then you're flying a Christmas ship. So, Mike, you should go to the right, Mike. Okay. So if you see this layout up top, so the yes. direction arrow says you're now shooting the empty shield facing instead of shooting... There's a direction arrow! Yeah! yeah. I've been playing this game for two years! <laughs> and now this is also how you can tell that you are... Behind the ship, because you see the flanks. At you know the how top? else I can tell I'm behind the ship? Now I'm behind the ship. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. uh, so that's how you can tell where you are relative to a cube, which doesn't have a clearly defined you're behind this ship. Right, but that you can tell cool. it's a tactical cube by the T right there. <laughs> oh, I thought it was just Titan's Tower. <laughs> and we're spinning. I'll try spinning. That's a good trick. And we're done. I'll take some Omega Marks, even though I have a full uh, Omega reputation. Turn them into that lithium. I could do that. You can uh, also get Omega any, Gear. Uh, question. Any chance the artificial scarcity for the Trawl and the Bajoran Interceptor could end for those of us that missed out? I believe by artificial scarcity you mean they're not in the Phoenix Box. And uh, by the answer, of course, to why things aren't in the Phoenix Box is because people keep not giving Jet time to put things in the Phoenix Box. I believe put the ISS Staddy in the Phoenix box has been the top of your to-do list for about a year now. <laughs> so I have I have a really nicely organized schedule of times when things go into the Phoenix box. And I have the ISS Staddy at the top of that list because it's the oldest thing that still needs to go in. Yeah. The I This list is really nice because then we make a new event reward. We say we shipped it live to this platform on this date. And then if I'm updating the Phoenix box and it's a year from that date, I can put it in and take it off the list. 
And the great thing is, since I made that list, I haven't had time to update, to update the, the Phoenix, Phoenix box. box to put the ISS Daddy or a bunch of other things in this list. So the next update to the Phoenix box will be a gigantic update whenever you get the chance to do it. Yes. In fact, isn't it on your schedule now? I don't actually know. I have a lot of ships on my schedule. It might true. be on Jeremy's schedule. Okay, all right. Might Maybe. be on John's schedule. Uh, Captain Blade J52 says he's been playing this game for six years and he has never noticed that T on the cube until it's pointed out to him just now. <laughs> His brain is broke. Well done, Jesse. Well done, Jesse's shoulder. I live to serve. <laughs> the, the shoulder of Jesse. <laughs> the shoulder of Jess compels you. Yeah. Uh, someone says put a cow in the Phoenix box uh, for an epic token mm -hmm. uh, for more cattle uh, cloak. I agree. Uh, Mar Hawkman says green goes nicely with blue. That's true, but not true according to color theory. Look, someone's flying along in a really, really pretty ship. Hey, what's that? That is a shepherd class. Hmm. Not the Gagarin, the shepherd. And now they've turned it to an area where I can't see it. Wow, I'm really fast. <laughs> well, bye! <laughs> <laughs> Dad, you can look at how pretty my ship is. Yes, green and purple, the best color combination. Let's zoom in on all the green and purpleness of this. Mm -hmm. So pretty. <laughs> all right. Uh, question, as persistence brings victory and victory is life, next featured episode replay or the rewards popping up somewhere? Um, the last time I got a lot of questions for the featured episode replay, uh, the, uh, the, what happened was I went downstairs and said, hey, Jared, can we do a featured episode replay? And he said, I guess. And then we did one. So... Uh, I'm going to try that again tonight, and we'll see what happens. That sounds like a great thing for Discovery characters. <laughs> well, no, it's featured episode replays for... Oh, right, but new Discovery characters. Yes, yes. To get access to new rewards that they don't have. Yeah. yeah. I think my Discovery character is the only one on my account that haven't gotten yet. Right. That'd be nice. Uh, Don Prohl says the beam the spire button doesn't work on the new TFO. Uh, that's interesting. Speaking of the new TFO... You should play that. Let's do that. You should slot ground traits first. <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> What would we do without you? Not have ground traits. <laughs> yes, <laughs> All right, Jet, what ground traits do I need? What weapon are you using? I am using um, the Nicole blade and ah. the Zenkethi cannon. The Zenkethi cannon. I think the, the Zenkethi... press 2 to kill things cannon. I think the Zenkethi cannon is an assault weapon. Chat, please yell at me in chat if I'm wrong. So let's go with assault training. Okay. I really like brutal impetus, so let's go with that one. Okay. All right, let's see. I believe I had that. Right, oh, that's your fury mechanic. We were just talking about that downstairs. Yeah. yeah. I like creative. Creative's a good one. Okay. I should go with that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, field technician's great. Um, let's see. Does that make him cool? Yeah, cool down. It's okay. Yep. Yes. Um, <laughs> I've dear, always dear. been a fan of Lucky. Cool. Make an example is a really funny trait. I really like it. The first time I saw that, I... I was not convinced that was the name we intended to ship with, but apparently it was, so great. <laughs> great. Props, John. Uh, where's the one? Oh, Jesse, could you go wave your arms at the uh, the light thing behind the screen? You should probably slot physical <laughs> damage. Or the physical strength. Cause... Oh, yeah, I'm doing melee stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the... There's one that I have that I want to make sure I still have. It's the uh, the one with the um, that you get... From the temporal missions, where when you're about to die, it creates it puts a red shield around you and creates a bunch of clones over somewhere. That's from your shield. Oh, okay. You want to slot the self-modulating fire shots, whichever the ground one is. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we got. We got one more. Serenity, show no weakness. Show no weakness. Is, I, I've always just seemed like I get flanked all the time. Why would I do that? <laughs> uh, I like strike team specialist, but let's keep looking. Okay. Well, I mean, you should slot it, but let's keep looking. Okay. Anyway. Let's see. Um, ooh, Universal Laws for Lackeys is a great one. Jesse, any suggestions on which trait to replace it for? Um, well, I don't know how much he actually uses his kit powers on ground, because I haven't seen him do uh, a ground thing recently. You I make do. Gr I do. Compared I have good ground space. missions. Mm -hmm. More, probably, actually. It'd be hard to be less, so... <laughs> 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 I think I would replace the physical strength trait with that. Okay, but I but I do melee a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, just warning you, I melee maybe more than I should. I believe you. I think universal law plus your, you know, fury and raging trait is a good combo there. <laughs> just get on a kill streak. Oh, yeah, let's go. Uh, Kizu says Jesse says take uh, mysterious stranger. I agree. We should have that trait in the game. Oh no. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, next time I'm loaned out to the systems team. <laughs> What was the last ship you made? I have never made a ship. Did, I thought nope. you did something I have on never the... made a ship. I, I did a ton of work on the scaling ships when we first made them scaling. Um, but uh, I have never actually made a ship. Huh. I thought you did work on the, the Hestia. The... Uh, I've made consoles and traits. Okay. Because uh, <laughs> Phil was making the ships at the time, but he didn't have enough time to make the consoles and traits that went with them. Yeah. So. so I want to take a moment to briefly talk about um, one of the coolest things about this mission, which is uh, how much you don't need to read to play it. The, and, uh, the content and environment team did a really, really good job of everything in this mission being super clear about where to go and what to do uh, mm -hmm. without having to use contacts in any way. And uh, I love it. It's great. I know some of my first feedback Someone's already on this in honor guard was... armor, so I will join them. My first bit of feedback on this was wow, Mike, you should rename your costume so you know which one's which. And my second bit of feedback was... <laughs> but, was I, but I know which is which. But that's because you only have three. Exactly. Are you, are you even trying? I don't need more than three. I have what? Casual Pirate Commander. I have... I'm on a mission from the Klingon Empire. And I have... Let's go Niners. Okay, but we already knew that he's not a serious endgame player. Space, Space Barbie, Barbie is, is the, the real and Listen, game. I spent like an hour on my bridge officers the other day, uh, remaking them for like the 15th time. I'm just happy with how Cogtash looks. Each or total? Go, uh, go, go! Total. Yeah, Ryan did a fantastic job yeah. um, working with our effects artist, Chris Menard, and with the environment artist who did a ton of work on this map. Uh, Nick and David both did a, a bang-up job, not only making this map pretty, but really easy to understand and having this neat visual mechanic that makes you feel like you're really doing things on Pavo and, and then you know where to go and what to do. Yeah. One of the things Follow that the, I... The, blue, the purple, blue, red lines. Yeah. I, I thought it was really neat that like it picks... I think there was like nine different places you can end up running down mm -hmm. and it picks uh, three of them each That's time. Thought, and yeah. the communication on that I thought was, was really easy to follow, but I thought yeah. it made a lot of sense. I, I really liked that. Mm -hmm. In a very early playtest of this mission, this TFO, there was a bug where when those agonizers exploded, they would harm you. It was never meant to work that way, but it did for a little bit. <laughs> um, and uh, I always have an instinct to roll backwards away from them when I nice. set one off. Yeah. Uh, after after one playtest I was in, they're like, those shouldn't be exploding. Jet, go go take away the, the, the part where it hurts me. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, this gun uh, is the Herc killer weapon. Like th that's why I bought it in the first place. It just it just mows them down. The, the trick to ground Herc is there's a glowing attendant and it's named glowing attendant. And once you kill that, it's it's the space version of the Zenkethi cruisers. Mm -hmm. Yep. You just you just shoot the ground Herc attendant and everything else. The, the glowing attendant and everything else is easy. Yep. Press two to murder. <laughs> Next one. The nice Yay! thing about the AOE weapons like that is you probably will just hit the glowing one by chance and then the rest of them will go down. Yeah. Oh, time to activate one of my favorite uh, kit powers. Oh, they're almost all dead. That was a waste of time. But <laughs> Yep, they're all dead. My team is doing a very good job. Looks like you got a lot of people stacked in one location. Yeah, well, yeah maybe... You can tell it's three of you from the distances on the side. Yeah. It looks like it's... Two people soloing and then the three of you, so yep. evenly balanced. <laughs> Perfectly <laughs> balanced, as all things should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're going to rip through this side and then move on to help another one. Yeah, it'll be fine. The The first day this went out, um, I very happily told Andre that we, my, the first team I played with, you know, passed through the entire queue with flying colors, and he was like, but not but not two flying colors, I hope, right? Like, they, they, they had to try a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's not easy. You yeah. know, you get the people that are used to running, like, you know, elite queues on the ground, and they're like, yeah, well... <clears throat> well, they did, and they did have to try a little bit. Mm -hmm. like, like, my experience Tumor. with this queue oh, has been no. it's always really easy when things die in one hit instead of five, so... Yeah. <laughs> I really like this one. Oh. Yeah, me too. This is one of my favorite ground queues. Yeah. I would love to take some of the... Um, lessons we've learned here and apply them to some older queues, uh, like, for example, the one where you're, uh, the Borg one where you're tr taking down all those barriers with the towers. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what that one's called now, but... I can't keep the Borg ground queue straight. I... Yeah. What, what, you get me into the map and I know what I'm doing. Are you talking about the cure? I think I am talking about the cure. Mm -hmm. See, I was thinking it was Kittimer. It proves okay. my point. 
See, the, 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 the problem with our Cure ground is that we didn't detune the E string on our guitar like Robert <laughs> Smith. So it's not a real Cure experience. Oh, oh man. You guys say Ryan is bad. That's it's not even a pun. It's just... <laughs> no, it's, that's, that's still a play on words, bro. I'm sorry. Yeah. You have entered the pun zone. Oh, I take it back. You can't. You can <laughs> um, never take a pun back. Nor should you. Mean your puns, coward. No, I really do want to take an opportunity to make a pass on all the Borg stuff at some future point, time permitting, and just give it some nice new polish and maybe a few new features and get to where, like, the cure uh, doesn't take 45 minutes on ground. Yeah. I also think I speak for everyone in chat right now when I say it'd be nice to finally get the elite version of those Borg cues. I'm... Inclined to agree, but I wasn't going to say anything because I didn't want to make promises. But thanks. Well, I'm not asking for promises. It's just on the sur subject of things that see. Be nice Jen, to do Jen is like the Lorax. Yeah. She speaks for the chat because the chat has no tongues. <laughs> oh no, the chat says plenty of stuff. They, yes, they, I I agree. I would love to get many, the many elite tongues. versions back. But first, I want to make them like better and more streamlined and more understandable, so that you don't get into you know Kittimer ground and everyone goes ah. Oh. Nobody knows how to play this. So apparently the combat tardigrade is, according to Chad, an excellent uh, thing for this map because if you just drop him uh, right, at the, right near a crystal, he'll just maul all the Terrans as they show up. And that's great, but laser dinosaur. Yes, that's what I use. Because <laughs> style points. Yeah. Every time that uh, Neverwinter says they have better dinosaurs, I just think about this guy and laugh. It is and laugh. a dinosaur with lasers on its head. Coming out of its Their mouth. argument right. is invalid. <laughs> There's actually was somebody who was saying, uh, are we done with this one? Transport to Spire. No, it doesn't work. Interesting. I'll have to talk to, oh, talk to Ryan about that. But then it did. Well, one of you on the bottom. No, no, no. I know what's going on here. Mm -hmm. This is a UI lag issue that I was talking to Ryan about. The button's never supposed to be in the middle of your screen. And when it's in the middle of your screen, it won't work because it's not actually there anymore. Mm -hmm. The UI just hasn't realized you don't have that button. Oh, it's the Loot Critter bug. <clears throat> kind Ish. of. I mean, there's different things that cause the Loot Critter text to appear, but the reason you can't click on it and actually talk to Loot Critter is because of that bug, I'd imagine. I believe it's the same one. Yeah. Which, I really want to know what actually happens if you click Talk to Loot Critter. Nothing happens. I've clicked that button so many times. We I, should I mean, I could hook up a contact to Loot Critter if you're that cute. You should. That would be a wonderful April Fool's joke. Mm. <laughs> well, there was an April Fool's Day patch notes where we removed Loot Critters. I remember that one. Yeah. Mm. There was an April Fool's Day where we set STO on the test server back to version 1. Yeah. Yeah. I Maria wish I had been had, there for that. Maria had a fun time trying to make that happen. Yeah. yeah. She, she told me how that was her idea, and she thought it was hilarious, and then realized the amount of work she had to do to make it happen, and yeah. it was painful. Yeah. There was also the... Was it Playable Horde announcement, or, or uh, what was it? I think we did that. Uh, we've had quite a few good April Fools out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, everyone loved the art artisanal audio, though. Yeah. Yeah. Ar artis <laughs> artisanal so much, sonification system. So much yeah. so that we just keep bringing it back. Yeah. Um, somebody asked, uh, will we be seeing more Discovery ships in the future? Uh, no, we are never making another ship from the TV show Star Trek Discovery that just got renewed for a third season, and we'll probably have many more years of content and new ships. And if you believe that, I've got a new ship to sell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, sorry, I know that was a sarcastic answer to a, to a genuine question. We will definitely be making more, more Discovery ships. Uh, the, the, when and how, I, don't, I can't say, but do keep in mind that the... Um, uh, all the ships that we created for Battle of the Binary Stars have not been released yet for players, so there's the, a veritable goldmine there. The of great for news design. for ship lovers is that, in addition to Discovery, we've got the Picard show going on. We've got the, the two animated about, series. A whole bunch of Star Trek is coming down the pipe, and we now live in an era of digital starships. And while it's a ton of work to make a digital starship, it's typically less expensive than it would be to make physical models and then blow them up. Yeah. Um, so instead of saying, okay, well, we're going to take this model kit off the shelf and we'll just move around the numbers, and thus you get the NCC-1017 in Doomsday Machine, um, <laughs> we will we'll see a, just a host of new ideas and designs and concepts for ships. And, and, and because we work closely with CBS, many of those models will come to us directly, uh, allowing us to make some of the most accurate ships we've ever made. Yeah. I, I expect we're going to see a lot of new design aesthetics, um, including interesting choices like 
when you look at the ships that are at the Battle of the Binary Stars, it sort of upends the notion that the, the typical ship design for Federation starships is like the Enterprise, where you have a, a saucer, a secondary hull, and, and then the two warp engines above the hull. Um, and, uh, and it says that something that's more like the the Reliant, you know, is is actually a much more common design, the Walker and whatnot, uh, which have just a single saucer and then two engines coming off of that. Possibly or at least it was before the, the era of the Constitution becoming more ubiquitous. I entirely possible. And, and this is just because, of course, in TOS, all we saw was the Connie because that was the model they had. And so it was just sort of assumed that oh, that's how the Federation makes its starships. And now they're saying, no, we're going to sort of upend that idea. And we've seen some variations from that before, the Akira class and whatnot. But they deliberately sort of stacked the deck with this design. And, yeah. and I expect, if you've seen the, the Section 31 starship in Discovery, the, there's going to be a lot more things that are going to sort of blow our concepts of what does a Federation starship look like? Uh, someone asked if we'd ever do a video blog series on um, how we design the ships. Uh, well, that's what the stream's for. Uh, but also we have um, a, a series of articles on the operations pack being run on HeroCollector.com right now uh, that we're sharing every Tuesday. Um, and those are great. You should go check them out. <laughs> yeah, Thomas Maroney loves to talk about the design process for ships, and he frequently will release articles about them. Yeah. I, I In fact, any chance we give Thomas Maroney to talk about ships, he will take. Yeah. Uh, often to his own detriment. I love getting to talk to Thomas about ships. Me too. And one of the cool things we've done for some of the recent ship releases is... Um, so, so Thomas does all the artwork. I do all the systems he work of it has this seating and these abilities and whatnot. Yeah. And Thomas has been taking that and kind of like morphing them and talking about like the lore behind some of this stuff. Yeah, well, it's a thing that we started doing um, because normally when we do a lockbox, we have the lockbox announce blog and then Jet does the stats blog. And I assigned the systems team and announce blog for a ship bundle, which is not a lockbox. And I said, we've never done anything like that before. What will we do? And I was like, I don't know, a lore blog? And Thomas was like, all right, it's from like two seats down. <laughs> it's really cool because then my favorite part of that is is getting to read those and being like, oh yeah, and here's what he's talking about this thing the ship does and this thing the ship does. Yeah. And like, He does a really good job of techno babbling his way into our describing our mechanics. Yeah, like I, I forget exactly how he described flanking on the, the recent bundle, but that was really neat. My favorite thing to hear described, of course, is, oh, the ship, the ship something, 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 miracle work or something, something. Yeah. Just, just the ways to talk into that is... Thomas does such a great job with that. He does. Thomas loves this stuff more than pretty much anyone on the planet. We're very lucky to have him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of the Klingon warships in Disco looks like an STO Raptor. Um, well, I think that's uh, less of an example probably of inspiration because when they were designing the Disco ships, we hadn't sent them anything yet. Um, and more of a, you know, our concept artists are very good and, and ship artists are very good at coming up with, uh, you know, this is what the sort of design models of a Klingon ship are. This is what sort of the design features of a Romulan ship are. Um, and translating that as well as somebody who might be hired to do the same thing for a television show. Over to, well, actually two sides, but the, yeah, the red. there's an agonizer over there. Yeah, oh, yeah. you gotta go, go stop that. Left. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <laughs> Here's the no. elite forces right behind me. <laughs> or I'm right behind. Just hey, stab buddy. Him. Stab him. Stabbing time. Actually, I'm gonna send Kathy punch him. You you should use the debuffs and the buffs you have. I don't know which. Okay. Press all of the red buttons in the bottom right hand corner. They've never seemed to do anything useful. They just I so you know. like comment about his kits. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> using all the universal kits. Ah, that's what I thought kits were. Ah, so we have a lot of kits that are universal, so they can be used by any profession. But we also have a lot of kits that aren't. It's like, there's tactical kits that only tactical officers get to use. And then science and engineering. But we're clearly playing a tactical captain right now. Nice. Nice. Yay! We did the thing. All right, let me pick up comp marks. And beam back up into space. Uh, Zolman, yeah, I love to hear Thomas talking in the streams, too. He's just also a very busy man who is often uh, leaving early on 
Wednesdays, which usually means he comes in around like six thirty seven in the morning. Uh, so I try very hard to not make him stay late on those days if I can. Okay. And let's slot Got another that. Mark box. I do. Game of marks. Call marks. Uh, oh, <laughs> hey, one more. No, you got three more. Game of marks. Two more. Cop marks. Game of marks. Okay. I was paying attention. Well, I wasn't. Yeah. I love this fill all button. I'm so glad we added it. I want more convenient buttons like that. You know the one I want. You know. I, I don't, but you'll tell me after the stream, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So. Oh, let me slot need to that. Slot that, that yep. Reward. You can see how much time I've had to play <laughs> this particular TFO since it went live. Well, <laughs> you can always buy it out. I could. And I probably will in the end. Uh, all right, cool. Um, I should go destroy some Voth ships. Is there a Voth space battle zone? There is yeah. a... The, the Undine space battle zone has an area next to it where you can blow up Voth ships. Okay. I, I don't know. Delta Quadrant. Okay. You, it's in the so I gotta go find the It's Spirit. right next to New Romulus. <laughs> uh, I don't know if any of those are close, so is I'll... Is sectors, I think, close? Yeah, it's the Azur Nebula. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Woo! Woo! Uh, Sir Boulevard says, um, Jesse, can you make Mike get the USS Pathfinder character sheets out on the website? I don't know, Jesse, can you? I don't know, can I? <laughs> Next time we run, I'll try and remember to put them up. Sure, just to, like, I don't know. They're all, like, written in pencil, good. which is, you know. See, Mike doesn't report to me, so no. I can't really make him do anything. I certainly do up into the left of your current position. Sphere gateway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you done any of the things in the Dyson Sphere yet? Oh, yeah. I've done okay. all the story missions in there, yeah. I just wanted to make sure you'd done the intro to the Dyson Sphere. Oh, yeah, so we don't get stuck do with the that. stuff here. Mm. I mean, they're not terrible. I had to do no, them recently. No, we don't want character. to do them on stream. Could be better. Yeah. Not, Could be worse. Not my best content. Uh, when you spend money on Zen, aren't you just paying back into your salary? Yes. So that reminds me of a funny thing. Uh, so when I was in QA... Um, there's a bunch of stuff we check you know, every time you know, the server comes back up from a patch. One of them is Zen purchases. And there is... Um, I can't say much about this, obviously. There is a company credit card, and it feels really funny to use the company credit card. Where you want to enter the sphere. Okay. It feels really funny to use the company credit card to buy yeah, Zen. Zen? Yeah. Because it's Cryptic Studios paying Cryptic Studios for Zen. Like, oh. Sweet. <laughs> All right, where am I going? Uh, you need to go to... Uh, hit the return to beta quadrant button, I think is the fastest way, because I think you entered the wrong door. Yeah. Oh, I was supposed to go to the gamma, not the delta? No. No, it's... There's, there's like four doors in these things, yeah. Yeah, yeah someone says wrong sphere. Yeah. The, the very bottom one. Yeah. Solonet Solonet sphere. Sphere. Uh, Hippie John HippieJohn71, I uh, quite enjoyed making a foundry mission on the stream. I may come back to that again someday. Uh, someone was asking what a TFO is. It's a task force operation. It is a uh, type of content where you queue up, uh, sure, to uh, fly directly forward. Flying directly forward and fully balls yeah. and cloaking. Yeah. You're getting it. <laughs> you actually need to go to the next map, which is directly in front of you. What? So, so if you hit the yeah. map button... So we are so in going here. Yeah, yeah. contested zone. So we're Got in it. we're in the base area with all the fancy stuff. The contested zone is where you fight Voth, and then to the right of that or east, I don't know. Directions yeah. are weird. Space east. Yeah, I really Directions admit, I did the story yeah. bits in here and then I left because yeah, yeah, I had other things to do. <laughs> yeah. If you have destroyed Dyson ships, battle zone as your endeavor, this is also where it is in the Got the it. contested zone. Got it. Duncan Idaho is yelling, follow Duncan. Uh, are you, is that who the person on my team is? Are you Duncan? You're if way you, over there. If you right-click their name, it'll tell you what their handle is. Yep, Gorgonops, that's Duncan. All right, let's look for some Voth and mess up their day. It's, you actually need to outright Keep transfer going. maps. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, oh, I see. Head over to the right side mm -hmm. where that big arrow is. Mm -hmm. It says to the contestant. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mauricio says, Jet, will you design the advanced systems for a potential T6 work beat? <laughs> ah. Hmm. So, the work beat is the... Which one of the Odyssey consoles is that one, Jesse? Uh, the engineering one, because it's, a, it's essentially it's a shuttlecraft that's mm. used for starship construction and maintenance. Ah, okay. That's why it kills you. That makes sense. Yeah. That's why he wants to get a T6, because shuttles don't come in T6. Mm-hmm. I'm not seeing Vaughn. On the other there hand, you, can, de you can detach the Aquarius <laughs> There will be Vaughn. Coming right. soon. The Starting. Aquarius rate is a T5. Yeah. Uh, Hippie John 71 says, despite its age, Jesse still holds the medal for his favorite mission in the game. He doesn't say what the mission is, but... Thanks. It's probably the one that I might be inclined to pick. <laughs> There's hearts and minds. Oh, really? Huh. A lot of people don't like that one. Um... <laughs> I didn't know you could not like that mission. Yeah, Hearts well, and Minds. So, I remember when Hearts and Minds first released, and someone posted with, "So this was an attempt at a horror mission, and it's terrible. Whoever did this should take notes from the person who did what lies beneath." Which that's was a real horror mission. <laughs> Which you also did. Yes, um, and there are different kinds of horror because yeah. Hearts and Minds is cerebral horror. It's really about like confronting th this person who's literally losing his mind. Uh, and has decided, oh, I'm going to just make these copies of myself uh, that are all suffering from the same sort of problem. Um, and so it, it's, you know, raising the, the specter of things like cognitive decline and the horrors of things that can go awry with cloning when it's unchecked and, and so on. Uh, but it's very different from, like, the, the jump scares well, and dark scares I of what lies beneath. Yeah. Sorry, continue. <clears throat> I don't know if the, if Hearts and Minds is outright my favorite, but it's it's one of my favorites. It's short. I know part of it is <laughs> it's got to be nostalgia at this yeah. point because it's it's a classic that I just keep running every now and then. Right. Uh, yeah, they're talking about what lies beneath. Mm. Chat is. Ah. Okay. So what lies beneath was actually my first mission for Stoyle. Really? Yeah. That's cool. And it's been first down mission, first since. spoken uh, <laughs> hey. mini contacts. I don't know. I really liked uh, your Victory's Life mission. Oh yeah. Um, which I can't remember the name of now because it was something in Latin. Tempus Torquent. Tempus Torquent, yes. But playing through the storyline, I was like, if Jesse made any mission, I knew it was that one. Yeah. Who is shooting me? It's good because I was looking for things to kill, but all my allies are killing them too quickly and I can't get a hit in. And somebody else used that. Tempus Torquent also needs a little bit more love because it's just it's too easy to get lost. Especially if you're uh, like a newer player who's playing a Jim Hadar or something like that. You're like, I don't have a lot of experience and I can't use a map and there's not really any direction on this dark map in an EV suit. And you um, have to know to go upwards. Spoiler right. Way. Yeah, you have to know that you're going to be moving in three dimensions. And it's, it's softly sort of mentioned by Kira in one of her mini contacts. But uh, yeah, it, it needs help for people who get stuck too easily. Um, and uh, that's on my shoulders. Um, but I did like uh, no. getting the opportunity to have basically a Resident Evil boss, you know, a monster that shows up that you can't kill. You just have to run away um, yeah. until the, the opportunity arises for you to get everything into the right So position. if I approach things at uh, full, full impulse, mm -hmm. uh, they, I fly by them and don't get to hit them. That's if I don't approach them at full, full impulse, everyone on this map is going to hit them first. Here's a pro tip. You can do pilot maneuvers from about 13 kilometers in front of something. When you were like 12 kilometers away and you exit full throttle, that's, that's a great way to close the distance on these ships. I mean, then you can't jump backwards, but... Yeah, that's all right. But if someone's like, you know, about to steal your... <laughs> Finally, I got one! Yay. One out of five, you guys! What? No. I, no. I'm definitely not... It's because your teammate battles. wants to go into the battle zone. Uh, no, I think I just clicked on an exit. Or that. Press F to pay respects. <laughs> Although I do want to go to the ground battle zone at some point soon to take an image that someone was asking about. Because uh, when we released the Terran sword, they were like, you need to get a Klingon in full battle armor, uh, like honor guard armor, wielding the Terran sword, fighting a dinosaur. I get a screenshot of that with the caption, this is a Star Trek game. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> I 
I did make a gif once of uh, Martok with the sword of Kaelas fighting a dinosaur. <laughs> because I needed it to win a dinosaur battle in Neverwinter. The very first dinosaur battle we had. Before I once spent $100 that one time to make Julia admit the truth. <laughs> Honestly, the my favorite thing about Hearts and Minds is getting the doff every time. It's like, how many clones of this guy can I get? Yeah. Also, Mike, if you're having a hard time finding enemies... Ooh, that was weird. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely. I'm having a hard time finding enemies? If you open the map, you see this area in the top right with this, the red circle? Yeah. That means there's foes there, and they have the spot, and right. you don't. I'm on my way. And hopefully, you'll be able to beat some of your teammates there, now that I've just told them all on a couple of a second delay. <laughs> I'll use a lot of pilot maneuvers and full yeah. throttle. And you can see now on your yeah. map, it's that, that symbol in front of you. And somebody definitely beat you there. But several There will be plenty ah. of moth. Will there? I don't know. There's just the one left. There's the two left. There's the one There's one just left. the one left. There's, There's none left. I see that people have solved this zone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All of the, the open zones are... Not the most difficult, because they don't scale with player difficulty at all, because yeah, right. it's, it's the same difficulty for everyone there. Anywhere else that's open? No. No, but there might be another instance of the map as well. Oh, let's try that. Or you just lost control of an area. Which one? The one that I just went to? The one you're going to. Oh, great. Here we go! <laughs> full, I said full throttle! Make with the speed. Why are you so slow? You're a bird of prey. Because you're in an atmosphere. Take a look at your engines, too. Also, you're level 50, which scaled down your engine speed. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm leading the pack. <laughs> uh, as long as I can hit... It'd be kind of neat if we could get a persistent effect in here so that you see this atmosphere burn against your forward shield. That would be cool. Yeah. I'll Higher! Have, hit have all of them so right when somebody on blows them yeah. up. I can get credit. He doesn't have anything going on, right? No. No. Nothing happened in Chris Land. Yeah, I was talking to him just this morning about how he's got absolutely nothing on his plate. I can hear Chris. <laughs> okay, there we go. I got four Ooh. of them in one go. Wow. And we're done. Beautiful. Well done, let's, console. Let's let's well done let's indeed. go. Oh, still got a format cooldown on that. All right. You could at least open your box and see what you get. Yeah. Yay! The last time I did a personal endeavor, I opened a box and I got like 100,000 energy credits. Oh, that's not what I meant to open. Up here. Where's the endeavor box, though? Um, scroll up. Let's see. It's the top left second from the top. Ah, oh, there we go. Bam! Hey, you got a reroll token. Sweet. All right. Gamma. Repetitive. Gamma. Repetitive. And that's our cue. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Jet, thanks for helping me uh, uh, learn to fly, fly good. Uh, and, folks, we will see you next week. Um, uh, yeah, stream is going to be maybe on a different day next week. Uh, we'll have more details on that uh, next week. But uh, so long. Farewell. I'll feed a saint adieu. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone.